ओके शल वी स्टार्ट इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल रियाक्शन the iron oxidation or zinc oxidation or magnesium oxidation who what it may be so there is an electrochemical reaction is going on and then how those corrosion reactions or electrochemical reactions will affect or the kinetics what we call something called electrochemical kinetics in order to understand the electrochemical kinetics this polarization concept will be very useful okay so that's what understanding the corrosion behavior so why we will talk about the behavior i'll tell you exactly the concept of polarization then you will come to know the second part is the rate of electrochemical reaction is limited by various physical and chemical factors so obviously there will be certain physical factors and certain chemical factors which will influence the rate of reaction that also will going to go through these things and because some of the reactions are polarized or retarded due to the environmental conditions that also comes under the polarization concepts only and then the concentration differences which we come across the diffusion control and then all these things comes under the polarization so uh, let let us understand what exactly the polarization and the two types of polarization first one is the activation polarization there are two types of polarization what do you mean by polarization let us understand first what is polarization polarization is nothing but concentrating at one end see sometimes what will happen there will be more large accumulation of ions at one end and there will be very less ions accumulation at the other end that means what there is some polarization ahead and now this polarization will be of two types majorly one is the activation polarization other is the concentration polarization we will talk about now what is the activation polarization again it refers to the electrochemical process that is controlled by the reaction sequence at the metal electrolyte interface yesterday we understood when a metal is dipped in electrolyte solution at the interface there will be ions forming we understood yesterday because let us say some magnesium or iron rod if i dip or zinc rod dipped in the solution zinc is going to lose electrons so that left electrons will be on the surface for some time is it not unless otherwise if i connect with some wire the electrons will be come out of the circuit otherwise what will happen the center surface is negatively charged so when the surface is negatively charged whatever the positive ions in the solution will try to come to the surface because of the opposite charge attraction so that means what at the interface at the interface there will be some charge balance and that potential we understood as electrode potential yesterday we come to know that now at that interface how the re reactions of the process will comes under the sequence called activation polarization see it's very simple concept clearly understand i'm talking about one reaction i took the example the reaction i took the example is this uh, 2h plus 2 electrons gives us h2 what is the reaction <laughs> standard reduction 2h plus plus 2 electrons gives us h2 reduction or oxidation reaction because gain of electrons reduction reaction so 2h plus plus 2 electrons gives us h2 fine now you tell me where this reaction will happen where this reaction will happen where will happen 
This will happen wherever H plus ions available, wherever electron is available, they react to form H2. That's all. Huh? See, that, that may be iron oxidation, zinc oxidation, wherever it may be. When H plus ions are available, H plus ions react with electron to form hydrogen. Fine. Now, this reaction of H plus ions, electrons gives us H2. To proceed, there are several steps. If I look carefully, there are several steps. Now, you tell me, let us say H plus ions available here. They have to react with electron. Where will be the electron available? Where will be electron? That's what yesterday we talked about. Electrons are available on the metal surface because metals contains quite good number of electrons. So they always reside on the surface only. So that means what? H plus ions has to come to the surface in order to extract the electron, in order to react with electron, is it not? Then only 2 H plus plus 2 electrons will react to form H2. You understood the reaction carefully? So you have to pictorially understand the reaction. When two H plus ions has to react with two electrons, where will be the two electrons available? The two electrons available on the metal surface. So that means what? If this is the metal, if this is the solution, H plus ions in the solution has to move, move, move and come to the surface in order to take the electron. Now what is this process of H plus ions coming onto the surface? Diffusion. In mass transfer, what is called? Let us say H plus ions are here. My surface is here. This H plus ions has to transport from here to here. What we call this process? Diffusion. H plus ions diffuse in the bulk solution, travel, travel, travel and come to the surface in order to take the two electrons. Then only H plus ions plus two electrons gives H2. You understood now? So now what is the reaction limiting here? There is mass transfer is coming. For example, if, if this H plus ions not traveled or not transported to the surface, where will H2 will form? Of course, electrons are available here. But H plus ions has to come to the surface in order to react with electrons here. Then only H2 will form. Bubbles will form. H2 bubbles will form. You are getting here? So the first and foremost is the mass transfer coming into picture. Because the H plus ions has to diffuse, diffuse and coming on the surface. Why I am saying diffuse? Because in the solution, there are not only H plus ions available. What are the other ions available? No, let us say for example, I took water, Amma. What are the ions available in the water? <laughs> H plus, <laughs> OH minus, H3O plus. These are all ions only. H2O, if I break it, H plus, OH minus. And then 2H plus OH minus, H3O plus ion. So these are all ions in the solution only. Now how many ions are available if I just took water? 3 ions are available, H plus, OH minus, H3O plus ions. Fine. That means, if I say H plus ions has to come to the surface, it has to compare with OH minus and H3O plus. Is it not? Now there are not only, not only H plus ions available, it has to throw back OH minus ions out to diffuse and come to the surface. Is it not the competitive reactions are happening? Clearly understand the visualization. I just took example of water. If I took HCl plus water, how many ions are available? 5 ions, H plus, OH minus, H plus ions from the HCl solution, Cl minus ions, H3O plus ions. Is it not? If I add H2SO4 solution, if I add KCl solution into the... So how many ions are accumulating? Now, my ion, my specific ion is H plus only because I took the example as 2H plus plus 2 electron gives H2. So H plus has to throw back all these ions in the bulk solution and only come to the surface to the react with electron. Is that clear? So there are some competitive reactions happening. These ions has to throw other things to diffuse and come to the surface for reaction of electron. Understood now? Now clearly look at the actuation polarization. We just took the reaction as 2H plus plus 2 electrons gives us H2. Now you divide the reaction, I am just saying the division of reaction, how exactly hydrogen forms. See the H plus ions in the solution has to diffuse and come to the surface. First step. That is the first step. Is it not? How hydrogen will form? 
the express ions in the solution has to come to the surface. So it has to diffuse and come to the surface and sit there. Or I can say absorb. What we call mass transfer technology absorb. Express ions has to absorb on my surface. That means they have to sit on my surface. Why have to sit? Because electrons are available on the surface only. Where are the electrons available? Electrons are available on the metal surface. Fine. So electrons available on the metal surface, H plus ions absorb, they took the electron, H plus plus electron gives H. One H plus plus electron gives H. Now, similarly from the bulk, absorb, take electron, H plus plus electron gives H. Now what is the next step? This 1H plus 1H react to form H2. That's what the bubble. Hydrogen bubble. Hydrogen is a single atom. H2 is a bubble. Hydrogen gas. So in the form of a bubble. So, second and third steps are first step is absorption. Second step is reaction. Third step is again reaction. What is the reaction? H plus H to give H2. So three reactions I told. Three steps I told. First step is from bulk to the surface. Bulk diffusion. Second step is reaction. H plus plus electron to form H. Third step. H plus H gives H2. Now fourth important step is. Fourth important step is. This H2 which is formed on the surface. Will it be on the surface or will it have to go? Will it be on the surface or has to go? Because see. H is formed on the surface only because H plus sitting on the surface to react with electron. So H plus plus electron gives H which is sticking to the surface only. Because it has sticking to the surface only. Still it is sitting. Why it is sitting? Because it is taking the electrons. Similarly, one more H. Now there is another reaction called H plus H gives H2. Now fourth important step is the form of bubble has to release from the surface. Otherwise, what will happen? See, if it is not released, let us assume. Now, my entire surface is having H2, H2, H2. The surface is having H2 bubbles. If it is not released from the surface, what will happen? There will not be further H plus ions to come out to the surface. Is it not? There will not be further electron extraction. You are getting or not? See, now the entire surface is H2 only. Where will be H plus ions sitting to extract the electrons? The electrons will not come. Because now this exposure of H plus is not to the surface. With H2 it is facing. Is it clear or not? So H2 has to release out or H2 only sticking on the surface? H2 has to release. It has to evolve from the surface. Then only a fresh surface will be available for H plus ions to sit and react with electron. All the time, whenever the H2 bubble forms, it has to come out of the surface. Then only again free surface is available for H plus to sit and extract the electron. So the fourth important step is release of H2 from the surface. Is it clear? So the four, I just took simple example of 2H plus plus 2 electron gives us H2. How many limiting steps are available? Four limiting steps. All are limiting only. Let us assume for time being, my limiting step is H plus ion to reach the surface. Will I get H2? Why I am saying limiting? See, let us, otherwise I can give a quote example. For example, the class is at 9.30. You want to attend the class by 9.30 here. By what time you have to come uh, start from your hostel? Maybe around 5 or 10 minutes back. Or 9.20 you have to start. If you want to start at 9.20, you have to take a breakfast at 9.10 or 9.15. If you, if you want to be there in the mess for 9.15 breakfast, you should be ready. You are taking your day-to-day -day activities by 8.45 or 9. Go back again. That means you have to wake up at around some 7.45 or 8 o'clock. If you want to wake up at 8 o'clock, you should have to slept at around 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. Go back. In all these steps, if you meet, 
you will come to the class at 9 30. Let us, for example, you have slept at late night. Maybe perhaps with some reason. Let us say you have slept at 4 o'clock in the morning. Then you cannot wake up at 7.45. You will be delayed. If you have been delayed, you cannot go to the, your mess at time what you have to take the breakfast. So you will be reaching to the mess by late. That means what? You cannot come to the class. You are missing the class. So just one example. There are how many limiting steps? Either you can slept, slept in at late night, maybe a limiting step. Or you slept at correct time. But you only, because of your laziness, wake in around at 9 o'clock. Have you missed the class or not? So, waking again is limiting step here. Otherwise, you have waken up, but you have not gone to the mess because of your laziness again. We don't know. Or, you are very good, but the mess was not good. So, you have not taken, you are simply enjoying. That is also a step in order to miss the class. So, why I am saying is, in order to form H2, there are several limiting steps. The first one, foremost limiting step is the diffusion of H plus from the bulk to the surface. If, I, if the H plus cells cannot move to the surface, I cannot see hydrogen formation at all. First limiting step. Let us assume H plus cells somehow reach the surface. Somehow reach the surface. If it is not extracting the electron, again there won't be formation of H. That means what? This metal has plenty of electrons, first point. If this metal does not have electrons, it cannot extract the electron to involve the reaction to form H. That may be second limiting step. Third one, let us assume it has already reacted, formed the H. Now this H and H has to react to form H2. We don't know. H atom, H atom, may they react, may not react. If the surface is feasible, they will react. If the surface is not feasible, they won't react. Third step. Fourth limiting step, after formation of H2, let us assume this H2 is sticking very firmly to the surface. It is not leaving the surface. Then where will be the further reaction to happen? There won't be further reaction because the entire surface is H2 only, H2 only, H2 only. Where will H plus will sit on the surface to extract the electron? Nothing possible. Because the entire surface is clearly blocked with H2 bubbles. Blocked with H2 bubbles. All are inert bubbles. Bubbles are inert. So, electron cannot pass through the inert bubble to reach H plus ions for reaction. Electron come out, cannot come out. When it will come out? If fresh surface is available, electrons residing on the surface of the metal, the H plus ions can take the electron out. But here, what will happen? Across the surface, there are bubbles are forming a film, a complete film, inert film. And where will be the case of electron to come out? It will not come. Is it not all limiting steps? All in all four limiting steps. It may not come, it may not react, it may not react, it may not come out. If all these will happen, then only the reaction will happen progressively. Clear now? Bulk diffusion has to happen, reaction of H plus to electron happen, H plus H plus to form H2 happen, H2 leaving the surface has to happen. So that fresh H plus will react to surface to form again H2. These are called activation polarization. Somehow, some reactions have been polarized. That's what I, in the previous slide I showed you. See? Either retarded. You see? Yes. Either retarded or polarized. Polarized in the sense, sometimes it may be increased or sometimes it may be retarded. Clear or not? You understood what is activation polarization? A simple quick example, I explained the four limiting steps. See, the reaction may be very simple. If, if you are really careful enough to understand, a simple reaction, a simple reduction reaction, 2H plus plus 2 electrons H2. But if you understand very carefully, there are so many limiting steps in formation of H2. And all are very important only. I cannot neglect any reaction here. Understood now? That's what the example what I call with your class. Any one parameter is very important for you in order to attend the class. If, if, if I neglect any one of the parameter in attending the class, that may be the limiting for you. Some people may have very lethargic in waking up in early, early hours. 
So that is a crucial limiting step for them to attend the class. Some people very lethargic in taking the food. So they will skip the breakfast. That may be limiting step for them to miss the class. In a sequence of electrochemical reaction for hydrogen to form, there are so many limiting steps here. Is it clear? No. Let us come to the second classification, concentration formation. Look at the two figures I have given here. As the name suggests, concentration polarization. There will be polarization, but here the concentration plays an important role. What is concentration? What is concentration? The quantity, the quantity of ions, the quantity of the or the, the amount which we took, that is the concentration, we always measure. Now take the two examples, two sequence of cartoons here I kept. This is the metal surface. Now look at the concentration of H plus ions at this figure, concentration of H plus ions at this figure. Now what do you understand? On the left side figure, you have bulk amount of H plus ions, that means more concentrated solution. You see that's all? So more H plus ions available means more concentration. Now what is the right side figure? Very less concentration of ions. So always we call it a dilute. Dilute solution or some neutral solutions. We have very less concentrated of ions. Here more concentrated ions. Now you tell me in both the figures on which side the reaction is faster. Okay, I'll give some the clue to you so that you can think of, you can correlate with this example. Let us say this is the platform, fine. Let us say I am catering some food items to you, all of you, let us assume. There is some rice, there is some, some other food, there is some chapati, let us say there are some seven items here, I kept like this. Seven items I kept like this. And I asked all of you to take the food. Let us say there is a catering here. Now, for example, if, if let us say these are the girls, these are the boys. <coughs> now, if the girls are coming and taking here, if the girls are coming one by one, take the case, if the girls are coming one by one, how about the food distribution, first case, the girls are coming one by one, how about the food distribution, if the girls are coming at a stretch, how about the food distribution? If the girls are coming one by one, how about my food distribution? If the girls are coming at a stretch, all 100 people have come at a time to my food catering. How about my food distribution to all of them? In first case, what will happen? Girls are coming in a single stretch. So, I quickly give the items and the girl will leave and another girl will come. First case, that means the rate of food catered to the candidate is faster. Because only one candidate, I can quickly give it and she can quickly leave out the my catering house. On the second case, if all of them come very quickly to the my food items, where should I give? Where should I give? Because all are coming on the surface, all are coming onto my food house, so I cannot be able to cater out. Because if I am catering this girl, another girl will be pushing her. I want, I want. So that means what? There is a there is a pushing activity or there is a competitive reaction for the other ions which are across the boundaries, fighting them jobs in getting to the surface. This is what happening here. If more ions are available, every ion want to come to the surface fastly in order to reach the surface to extract the electron. So what about my reaction rate then? Very slow because see. Even though how many fights will happen, only few atoms will reach the surface. What will happen to other atoms? Other ions will come and reach the ions already there on the surface of H+. Is it not? Because see, this surface is fixed. So how many I can accommodate on the first layer? Perhaps it may be 10 H+, plus ions. see 1 H+, plus, 1 H+, plus, 1 H+, plus, 1 H+. Plus. If I can able to accommodate here, maybe 10 or 15. If I am having 100 H plus, where could be the other ions? 
the other ions will sit on top of the H plus ions which, which are already occupied on the first layer. Or the other ions will sit whenever the previous ions have left the surface. This H plus have come here, if it is left, another H plus will come and occupy. Now what will happen to my reaction rates? The reaction rates are slower because these are all competing to reach the surface. So surface also does not know for which H plus I have to give the electron. Like what I, I felt here, 100 people have come. I don't know for which X people I have to give my food item. So the reaction rates are lower. Here the reaction rates are faster. Only one ion is there on the surface. Quickly I can give it and leave the girl out. So the two cases, concentrated solutions, diluted solutions. In concentrated solutions, the reaction rates are low. In diluted solutions, the reaction rates are fast. Clear? Now, let us quickly look at this case, particularly. Now, what is this case? Diluted solution. So, you have only very limited ions available. Very diluted source of ions. Now, if these are the diluted source of ions, definitely one or two will reach the surface because of their lethargic in nature. Already available less. And again, in every quantum of uh, people, there will be definitely certainly lazy persons will be there, lethargic will be there. So, only one who is very energetic will come out and will reach the surface. Other will try to well la la well la la So, what will happen? If that is the case, already less ions available, and only very few are reaching the surface, you will form a depletion layer here called depletion zone. But that is not the case here. There is no depletion zone because everyone are fighting because ions are more here, more concentrated. Everyone wants to fight back and reach the surface. But here the ions are less. Ions are very less, very few, 10 or 15. Among 10 or 15, only one or two will be energetic to reach the surface. So what will happen? Remaining all will be in the bulk solution. Just moving here and there. So definitely there will be depletion zone has formed. Now you tell me, in order to have the reaction, whether my H plus ions should reach the surface or won't reach the surface? For my reaction to happen, H plus ions has to reach the surface or don't reach the surface? Yes. Has to reach the surface. Anyhow, whether it is highly concentrated or highly diluted, it has to reach the surface. Somehow it has to reach the surface in order to extract the electron to form H2. Understood? So, now you think back here. Let us say for this case, because in diluted solutions, I already know that a depletion zone has formed. What do you mean with this depletion zone? Absence of ions in this zone. In the depletion form of the in the form of the depletion. Ions takune, already ions takune. For example, let us think of a flop movie. How do you get the audience? The movie is already flop, so definitely there will be the first two three rows will be blank. There won't be occupied people. Here and there, few people are there for time pass, though it is a flop movie. So there will be completely depletion zone, entire first two or three rows. Here also depletion zone. Very less science available, very less audience for a flop movie. Now, in order to complete this, in order to eradicate this depletion zone, what have to do? Already I know it's a depletion zone has formed. But my case is, for example, for that movie, this is a flap movie, but I want to increase the occupation rate. I have to increase the occupation rate for the seats to fill up or to get the income for a movie. What I will do? I do some magic. I will keep some one hour, another movie, or I will give some benefits. The show ticket rate will be one rupee. Like that, I do some magic such that the occupancy rate will be increased. I already know there is a depletion zone. Because I have to remove this depletion zone, if I won't remove this H plus ions will not reach the surface, I have to remove this depletion zone. What I will do? Like for what I am, for the movie I am saying, maybe I am, uh, maybe 
decreasing the rate of etiquette or keeping some other food stuffs free what i do is i'll keep an agitator here i'll keep an agitator what is the agitator do what agitator will do it it gives a swelling motions it gives some turbulence it creates some turbulence when it creates turbulence what will happen this will push the h plus ions to come across the depletion zone to reach the surface are getting or not so whenever depletion zone is there if i increase the velocities if i induce the turbulence H plus ions will come out of the depletion zone, reach the surfaces for the reaction to happen. So these are all mass transfer limitations. In electrochemical reactions, mass transfer limitations are coming. So now this is the mass transfer limitation. Forming a zone is a limitation. How I come across the limitation? If I increase the turbulence, if I induce turbulence, if I increase the velocities of the agitator, if I increase the speeds, it will throw out the H plus ions to come out of the zone to reach the surface. <laughs> Understood? So, whatever we have studied in mass transfer, kinetics, thermodynamics, will be connected to the all corrosion principles. Now, a very good example for you. What is it? Just listen. I said if I increase the agitation speed, what is happening? What is happening? If I increase the increase the agitation speed, what is happening? H plus ions are coming on the surface. Is it not? Coming on the surface. Okay. If H plus ions are coming on the surface, what is happening? What is happening? Reaction is happening. Reaction is happening. Let us assume if that reaction is corrosion. If that reaction is corrosion, let us say, if, if this is my iron, if this is my iron, iron is losing electrons, iron is losing electrons, who is taking the electrons? H plus ions taking electrons. So when electrons are taking out means what? I, electrons are losing out means what? Corrosion is taking place. So what I am doing here? Knowing or unknowingly, I am putting an agitator to increase the reaction yields but this is causing the corrosion to happen is it not again there is a happily there is a depletion zone is there i kept an agitator why i kept an agitator because agitator will give uniform turbulence uniform mixing good conversions good yields for my product in the reactor whether it is a batch or continuous water it may be but knowingly or unknowingly the agitator pushing the ions to the surface Reaction is happening. H plus ions are reacting the electrons, taking the electrons out. All my equipments are made up of iron only. Is it not my iron will get corroded? Because iron itself is pushing the ions to come to the surface. Understood now? So, Telisa Telikoma mass data bench, the yield peripotan control, yield perita telidrani, they would get corroded more. Concept of the So, concept of the end. Work name and equipment design, chasi, design drawing, lo, gise, si, baffle spetti, adi petti, idi petti, chasas to know. Oxar also in design principles. Chase no prem out in the end of the just took single reaction this to know. Okay, chinna H2 reaction this to know. End the logic in the children. Okay, chinna agitator petter for the end of the end of the children. If the acid is in a reaction, yield is not in a reaction. The conversions, yields, or selectivity may increase. I don't object. At the same time, there is another reaction is going on on the surface. Because my, my equipment is iron. Iron, by its tendency, loses electrons. Because the Gibbs energy is negative. We already discussed it. Thermodynamically unstable. So. Corrosion is predominate. Corrosion is predominate. That means what? We should understand, we should understand when we are designing, we are operating the equipment, in which zone my reaction is going on, whether in the activation polarization zone or in the concentration polarization zone. If it is concentration polarization zone, I cannot put agitator here. 
because if it is running with concentration polarization, already it is concentration polarized. Now I am pushing the ions to come to the surface by keeping some agitators. The corrosion is increasing. So, but whereas in the case of activation polarization, increasing the agitator speed does not affect it. Because what are the four steps in the activation polarization? H plus ions, H plus plus electron, H and H, H to leave out. Here there is no agitation speed, nothing will influence. But here agitator will influence the reaction rates. <coughs> so these all electrochemical reactions, kinetics, processes are influenced by the polarization concept. Is it clear? So two types of polarization, very important question from this unit. Activation polarization, concentration polarization. Just, just discuss what I told. The four steps there, here, the two figures here. Clear? That's what I have explained in the context. Because anyhow, I will send the slides to you. So you can go through those things. Okay. Now classification of corrosion. So I am moving to unit number two. Unit number one is over. So don't worry about silver. So I will complete anyhow. So that is not a big deal. If I just uh, take at a glance some six or seven classes, all the syllabus will be complete. As I already told, it's a theoretical subject, but I want to purposefully include some chemical concepts. That is the only orientation I want to give. Otherwise, I can I can just you can people go through it and write the examination. You will get. I'm very confident you will get. Everyone will get more than seventy out of hundred. That's sure because it's a theory concept. You yourself can read what is the classification of corrosion. You can write it the examples. So. But I want to include some core concepts into this. That's why I took this book. Okay. So based on the temperature, there are two classifications. Low temperature corrosion, high temperature corrosion. Based on the preferred way of corrosion, wet and dry. What is wet corrosion? Wet in the sense, corrosion taking place in the aqueous solution. Well, liquid is present. Okay. And the common example is corrosion of steel by water. Corrosion of steel by water. Just now we discussed what is corrosion of steel by water? What is there in the water? H plus ions. What is there in the steel? Iron. Because iron plus 4% chromium is steel. So H plus ions is there. If I keep any steel rod in water, H plus ions are there. They will try to extract the electron from the iron surface. Iron in the sense steel surface. So what is happening? Electrons are leaving out because H plus is a good oxidizing agent. Good ex electron acceptor. H plus ions try to pull the electrons. Common example. We know that steel will not corrode. Who told? Steel will also get corroded. But it took a long time rather than iron. Why it took long time? Because chromium is inhibiting the corrosion. The added 4% of chromium is forming a thin oxide layer. I will tell you the passivation concept you will come to know. So this coating or this chromium forming the layer will stop or will extend the corrosion rates to a certain extent so that the corrosion will happen at a later time. But definitely corrosion will occur. Second is the dry corrosion. What is dry corrosion in the film of vapors? Absence of liquid phase or above the dew point of the environment. Vapors and gases are usually examples. Steel wave furnace gases. Furnace gases. So you know in every furnace there will be gases out. And all these gases out will lead to call dry corrosion. Okay, so I've given some examples also. You go through it. Very good examples I have given, quoted here. So I kept all the oxidizing agents. What do you mean by oxidizing agents? Oxidizing agents we have seen in the electrochemical series. What are oxidizing agents? Which are good electron acceptors. So when our electron acceptor is there, that's a good oxidizing agent. They try to kill away. So in presence of oxidizing agent, our oxidation rates, our corrosion rates will be higher. So what are the examples? You see, look at here, dissolved oxygen, Cu2 plus O3, Cl2, because I already in the, in the series at the top, chlorine, fluorine, highly oxidizing agents we talk about in the series. So which are at the top of the series. So all are good oxidizing agents. So what will happen in presence of oxidizing agents, your corrosion rates are much enhanced. In absence of oxygen, oxidizing agents, your rates will be something. 
But in presence of oxidizing agents, what will happen? That's what I give an example. Whenever a gas cylinder catches fire, what we do? We will try to cover with the wet cloth. Wet cloth. Why we will why we are covering the wet cloth? Because it stops the further oxygen to come out of the surface. Because oxygen itself is a good oxygen agent. It will influence, it will enhance the rates. So all are oxygen agents. Dissolved oxygen, oxygen available, chlorine, fluorine, O3. Fine. Now corrosion rates. So corrosion rates. See. So we understood now corrosion is happening. Now how do you measure the rate of a corrosion? In chemical reaction also, we measure the rates. How do you measure the rates? Rate minus R H equal to. I think I only taught the chemical reaction in course to you. How do you write the rate expression? I think sir. We will write the rate expression minus R H equal to. Uh, so a rate constant. Uh, that means a temperature dependent on and then a concentration dependent on. So concentration plays an important role and temperature also plays an important role because the number of effective collisions will increase, if I remember. So in that way we will talk about the reaction rates, that is chemical reaction rates. But here electrochemical reaction rates, that means along with the chemical species, one more electron is added. So your kinetics will be much more complex. So how do we represent the rates in either of the four? See, as a mass loss per unit of surface and per unit of time. There also we define like this only. Reaction rates per unit area, per unit time. Is it not? What is the rate expression when we write in the units? In either in terms of surface or in terms of volumes we represented. So here also mass loss. Because mass is losing in the corrosion. How much mass loss? Per unit surface, because I told you, corrosion is specific surface area. Because it is happening at only certain surface only, not entire surface. So per surface area, per unit time. Or, how many number of moles transformed into on the unit surface? How many moles transformed? This much of Fe2 plus is transformed. Per unit surface value. Or, corrosion depth per unit time. Because how much depth corrosion has happened? If this is the surface, if this is the my metal surface till this part, how much depth corrosion has progressed? Corrosion depth per unit. Or in terms of current density, we, we talk about yesterday in surface area concept. What is current density? Current per surface area is called current density. Why we represent current per unit surface area? Because always corrosion will happen only specific surfaces. So, I cannot take entire surface into account, only the surface where corrosion has happened. So, current at that surface, current per surface area, that is called current density. So, I can find out corrosion rate as current density in terms of current density or in terms of mass, in terms of moles, what it is. Okay. So, this is what the expressions. Weight loss. Because when corrosion happens, there will be some weight loss. Corrosion happens, weight loss will be there or not? Weight loss will be there because electrons are losing. Electrons have some mass. Charged species. When I am losing electrons, so I am losing some mass. So, mass loss or weight loss. I represent always in terms of mm per year. Why mm per year? Because corrosion is a slower process. You can estimate the corrosion rates to be slower. but if you neglect, it will create the disturbance, damage. So always in terms of mm per year. See, milligrams per square centimeter. Sometimes MPY, we will call it as MPY. Mills per year, that is milli inch per year. Milli inch per year, per year this much of, that means in the inch only one third, or one, one, one by one thousand, milli inch, that much per year the rate will happen. So that is the formula. These are the weight, density, area, temperature, what time, water it may be. Okay. Fine. So these are the ways which we will exhibit or uh, talk about the corrosion reaction rates. Okay. So I will stop here.
next class probably tomorrow itself i will take i will start the effect of oxidizing agents so we are entering with the second unit